Good morning and welcome once again to WebFG. With us today is Boris Schlossberg. He's Managing Partner at BK Asset Management. Boris, thank you very much for joining us. So good to be with you. It's great to be here again. Okay, today at the Forex Day Conference, you're, introduced, you're going to present, introduce a new trading strategy. If you can please run us through it. Sure. You know, the basic idea that I, the sort of insight I had this year was that um, trading in general is a very difficult business because prognosticating is just a very, very tough thing to do accurately, consistently over a long period of time. Okay. And uh, in my own trading, I found that if I lowered my size, if I made many, many small trades, mm -hmm. my overall results were actually much better because no single trade was really affecting the PL of my of my account. If I could make a lot I could make a lot more mistakes because they were much smaller. Okay. And this allowed me to be a lot more flexible. What size of trades are we talking about here? So what I have done effectively is I trade now with no leverage uh -huh. per position. So just for example, if you're a retail trader and you have a ten thousand dollar US account, hmm. every single trade would be ten thousand units. Okay. Now I will I will go sometimes five six trades um, in, um, at the same time, so mm -hmm. I am levering my account five six times. All but right. no single position mm -hmm. is actually more than one times leverage. What this allows you to do is is if you are wrong, take very small losses, mm -hmm. and that in the long run is what really matters. The other thing that, that I think is important is when you're trading very small, you have the opportunity to take many more trades. Right. Okay. And the irony of the whole thing I think that a lot of people don't understand is that the more trades you take, the law of large numbers really comes into play. If you have a good system, System that has a positive edge, the more samples of that system you take, the higher the probability that it'll be profitable in the long run. And that's exactly what I'm discovering. I am basically finding out that you actually need to trade a thousand times a year, a hundred times a month, mm -hmm. to have enough sample size, enough trades, right. to um, let your system profitability okay. play itself out. So the main principles of your trading system are trade small, trade a lot, no leverage. No leverage, exactly. Trade small, trade a lot, no leverage, and, and the other very, very important component of my system, probably most important of all, is money management. Right. The thing that we've introduced um, now is very, very tight risk control. Okay. Our, all of our systems are automated, mm -hmm. and the moment they go into profit, we instantaneously move, move our stops to lock in at least a little bit of profit um, mm -hmm. the moment they go in. And the reason we found it out is because we've seen you know, very good trades go to profit right away. Very bad trades go to loss right away. Mm -hmm. But there's this whole middle amount of trades that are mildly positive, then it sometimes become, become negative. Okay. And our whole goal is that whole middle trades is to make them either flat or just mm -hmm. mildly positive. Never to let a winner become a loser. And by doing that, we've eliminated a lot of unnecessary losers. You can't eliminate losers, obviously. You're always going to have losers. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it basically usually works out 20% very clear losers, 20% mm -hmm. very clear winners, and about 50% is in the middle, or 60% in the middle. And it's that middle, the managing the middle, that really matters between winning and losing in the long run. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And also, let's, uh, let's talk about a practical example. Sure. Let's imagine that today's U.S. non-farm payrolls. Right. It's about to come out. What currency appears would you trade? How would you trade them? How would your system work? So first and foremost, it's very important. I think a lot of people make the mistake of, of trying to guess the non-farm payrolls. Okay. Uh, we did a study a while back where we took all of the best Wall Street guesses, for, uh, Wall Street estimates, excuse right. me, mm -hmm. not guesses, but estimates, for the past 24 months mm -hmm. and said, okay, let's see if they come in within 20,000, just you know, 20,000 of them. Right. And out of the 24 samples that we saw, 22, 22 did not meet the consensus number. That means they were, they were either above or below. More or less so, what you would expect. Right, so the bottom line is that basically the best minds on Wall Street with the best uh, statistical uh, information and the greatest analytical numbers cannot predict this number. Right. And I think that's what traders make a big mistake is trying to predict this number. We do not ever trade NFPs ahead of time. Uh -huh. We let the number print. Okay. We'll let the market react to it. Two things happen, first of all, uh, the spreads in the market will then shrink so you're not trading nearly as much volatility. Okay. And secondly, you're not uh, trading a surprise. You're not, you know, you're not on the wrong side of the market. You're only trading after the market. And then we let the market reaction to the news. Mm -hmm. That's what we trade. If the market thinks it's a, it's a, it's a positive reaction, mm -hmm. we trade positively. If it thinks it's negative, we trade negatively. We let the market tell us um, how the price should be traded. This made our system much less volatile mm -hmm. and also much more accurate. The trend is your friend? Yes, in, my, in some ways, but it's very important to avoid the volatility before the trend. Don't try to guess the trend. Okay. Let the market tell you what it does. You've mentioned the word volatility twice. Yes. People are talking a lot about it now. Yes. Low volatility, say on the VIX. Brutal environment. Brutal, absolutely brutal environment. I think I, I don't think we've seen, historically we've never seen volatility this low. I'll give you an example. Euro-Yen, which is a 
currency pair that is just sort of known as a stepchild of volatility, mm -hmm. spend the month of April in a 100 point range. Okay. That is something that it used to do in one hour mm -hmm. on any given uh, day. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's been incredible at how low volatility has been. And I think it's been a big problem for, uh, for traders. Is it the proverbial red flag on the beach? It, it is. The, the, the very tough problem with that is that, yes, eventually volatility is going to pick up big. Mm -hmm. The key thing is you just don't know when. And, and I think that many people who are betting on the fact that the volatility is going to pick up have been wrong so much that it's, um, you know, that it's just a difficult thing. Again, we don't try to predict uh, the future. We just try to trade what, what is available. So one of the things that we do now is we trade very, very small mm -hmm. time frames mm -hmm. and very small uh, stops and losses. Mm -hmm. So our general targets are only 20 pips mm -hmm. and our, 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 our stops are no more than 40 pips. We trade on an intraday basis because this volatility is so so narrow, mm -hmm. we don't try to go for large pippers. Okay, I know one hedge fund manager, Stephen Yen, uh, Stephen Jen, right. is uh, SLJ Partners, right. uh, ex-Morgan Stanley. He attributed part of the drop in volatility to all the new financial regulation. Absolutely. Banks just didn't want to take as much risk, I believe he was explaining. Do you believe that? I think it's, it's that is partly true, but okay. I think the much bigger factor is simply interest rate suppression, okay. right? All the central banks are actually trying to dampen volatility. They're mm -hmm. trying to dampen um, uh, rates because they've made, we're now in a inter zero interest rate environment virtually everywhere across the world. As a matter of fact, in, in Europe, we're now at a negative interest rate environment. It, and all of this creates much less speculation because it, 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 it doesn't afford any a uh, place where you can get yield. Mm -hmm. That's, for example, why the Australian dollar has been has been benefiting so so much recently. Uh -huh. It's because it's one of the few currencies that it provides a minimum amount of yield. But it's only what two and a half percent still. Mm -hmm. So because uh, investors cannot find return anywhere, you see a very very dampening of volatility. And also, I think the other thing is technology. We've become very efficient. The markets have become brutally efficient at mm. pricing everything very, very quickly. Okay. So for every buyer, there's a seller, and that's why you see prices be so tight. So vol volatility is low, but the risk is still out there. The risk is very much out there, and I think people should be you know, very, very wary of not getting too complacent. Yes. Okay. Boris Schlossberg, uh, managing partner, BK yes. Asset Management. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again next year. Great. Thanks to be here. And thank you very much for your time. That's all from all of us here at WebFG. Until next time.